Uh, so last night, Kennedy, an absolute historic vote, and some argue the most important aspect of it was the message it sent that Alejandro Mayorkas had abdicated his duty completely. Uh, yes, and he's also been lying to Congress saying the border is secure by any metric, by any measure, uh, whether it's formal or informal, um, it's not secure. And he's doing a really bad job discouraging people from coming through illegally into the United States and also a, a really bad job of backing up his people. What was interesting, it was a very close vote, 214 to 213, and it was three Republicans who actually voted with the nose. Mm -hmm. And they, they did it because Tom McClintock, who is a conservative, representative from California, he hates Mayorkas. You know, he's he represents Southern California. He sees what's happening with the border. He just doesn't want this to become a partisan battering ram where, you know, various cabinet officials are impeached and thrown out willy-nilly because it is meant to be very serious. That's why we haven't seen impeachment of a cabinet official since 1876. And that was Ulysses S. Grant's wool secretary, <laughs> William Belknap. <laughs> For those of you for waiting your history lesson that's for the day. Right. But, Deegan, that's exactly the point I think that people are making, that indeed it is so serious, that is why it was used now. That this is exactly the time for such a serious message to be sent, such a serious tool to be used, and it demonstrates the severity of the catastrophe that is the southern border and that was Mayorkas' reign. What's done is done, coming out of the House. Now it goes to the Senate, how quickly the Democrats can dispatch it in the Senate, whether it actually goes to a trial or not. But now the Democrats will be forced, any Democrat who dares uh, get in front of a microphone or strap one on, <laughs> defend what Mayorkas and Joe Biden have knowingly done to this country. Jerry Baker has laid it out in, in some of these terms, but the long-term damage and danger to this nation are both incalculable and unknowable. I mean, we see the financial and economic damage that cities and towns are grappling with in terms of the aid that is being handed out to people who should not be here. But also, uh, U.S. unemployment growth has gone to all to migrants, legal and illegal, since 2019, not to U.S. born individuals. That's a new recent report. The educational damage to young children who are crammed into classrooms with children who are uneducated and do not speak any English. But then the decades of waves of violent crime and just the economic burden for the certainly for the rest of my lifetime on this nation, with California, for example, handing out Medicaid to Ill all illegals in the state, this will spread. The number one national security threat is our nation's debt, $1 trillion in interest on the national debt. This is all on Joe Biden's shoulders, so the Republicans need to lay out the damage and the danger. So, Kaylee, that is a perfect segue in what I wanted to ask you about, which was given the razor thin margins here, um, what does it tell you that last night George uh, Santos, his seat, went to the Democrats in New York's special election? That the razor thin um, voting party lines in Congress just got a whole heck of a lot even harder for the GOP. So, as we're talking about the implications now that this has in this particular arena, the end of the day, the landscape is looking poor, and we are worried that it's a bellwether on the upcoming elections. But how does that dovetail in with the fact that right now, every state's a borders town, or every state's a border state, and every American loves on the border right now? Yeah, you know, it's hard to see how predictive that race will be because historically, when there's been a deep level of scandal, and I, I think it's a pretty deep level of scandal with George Santos and what went on there, at least for that district, that oftentimes it does swing back, that it is a uphill battle for Republicans. So it's hard to see how much of a bellwether or predictor it would be. But I think the one thing Republicans take from that is the Democrat who prevailed last night leaned into immigration. He did not hide from it. And the Republicans initially took great joy. He's talking about immigration. This gives us an opening. But he leaned in. He said, I'm a Democrat who wants to secure the border. And he laid out ways in which he would do that, whether those were false or not. It worked. And it worked in a state where there are many, many seats. This state. The, the key to the House majority ran through New York State in all of these seats. So House Republicans in these races need to know their Democrat opponent might mislead the nation on immigration, as happened last night, and end up being victorious. One thing I want to say about President Biden, he put out a statement about the impeachment last night. History will not look kindly on House Republicans for their blatant act 
of unconstitutional partisanship. History will not look kindly on a Democrat president that unleashed unprecedented waves of illegal immigrant immigration across our border doing untold national security damage. You cited the numbers, Emily. 20,000 Chinese nationals have crossed our border in the last four months. 20,000. All of fiscal year 2021, that number was 450. What is happening at our border? Why are these Chinese nationals coming in? We need those questions answered. And final point, I would just note Mayorkas in that Axios piece that came out this week about Biden botching the border crisis. Mayorkas actually told the president, hey, Mr. President, we shouldn't deport people in the first or stop deportations in the first hundred days. So he fought back against Biden. That might have been CYA. You guys know what CYA is. Cover your tail um, in hindsight. But my point is the mastermind behind what's happening at our border. You can blame it on Mayorkas. He deserves blame. It's the president of the United States. It's Joe Biden. The buck stops with him. He's the one who should be impeached. That's right. And this, our Valentine, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, I mean, the biggest issue is that it doesn't matter which border it is. Um, we don't know who these people are. Yeah. They could be, you know, ISIS, Hamas, pro CCP. So it is not too much to ask. We, we want to know who these people are, you know? So it, I, I don't think it's too much to ask. Can I ask you a question, Sorry. Ennis? Yeah. Sorry, um, of I, I just want to know, as someone who came to this country legally, yeah. and you went through the immigration process and became a citizen legally, how does it make you feel when, you know, thousands and millions of people are pouring mm -hmm. through the southern border and, and getting benefits that, even as an American citizen now, you do not enjoy? Of course, there's a process. You know, first you got a green card, then you wait five years, and, um, you know, you got to take the uh, citizenship test, and you become a, a part of this beautiful uh, nation. But what they do, I think, is uh, unacceptable. Yeah, and so many questions, and, and I think that you're exactly right that it is not too much to ask yep. to know who's coming across our borders, and part of that abdication of duty by Department of Homeland Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is exactly why he was impeached, because yeah. he failed to even acknowledge that or the beginning of the crisis. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.